Hey, congratulations to each and every one of you for National Honor Society Induction 2020. Wow, what a year. 2020. It is not the end of the world. However, it feels like it in many different ways. So, but congratulations. Uh, you are uh, National Honor Society induction this year and it's well deserved. Uh, so, have you noticed this? Uh, you know, this has kind of defined the year, COVID. Um, who would have thought, uh, beginning of this year, that we would be talking about a new virus being something that kind of strikingly looks like canvas? Have you noticed the, the similarities? Uh, let's look at that again. COVID and Canvas, kind of the things, the two C's that define 2020 for a lot of a lot of you and a lot of high school students around the country. And so, um, yeah, this year is full of obstacles. This full this year is full of challenges, and we are we are fighting those obstacles and challenges. But we we will be just fine. Uh, this too will. Um, eventually will end. We will have COVID with us for a while and, and we're going to learn how to live with it and the vaccines and science is doing a great job. And so so we are going to get back to a new normal soon, we hope. Uh, during that time, we want everybody to stay safe, of course, but we are also uh, learning what Canvas is. And I think Canvas will be with us for a while too. So uh, those are the kind of things that define your National Honor Society induction year. So congratulations. And in all seriousness, it is it is a well-deserved honor to be part of this group. You know, when I was a kid and growing up, and I grew up in western New York, um, I would sit at home in the evenings during the summer. And this was uh, before, obviously, before cable had every game on TV and, and everything else. And I'd listen to the Yankees. And uh and I listened to great storytellers, the New York Yankees broadcast, radio broadcast. And then uh, Sunday afternoons was reserved for Buffalo Bills uh, and watching watching fall and, and Buffalo Bills play. And, and that was kind of wrapped up uh, my life as a kid. So when people ask me, you know, in third or fourth grade, hey, what do you want to do when you grow up? What do you want to be? And um you know, as third or fourth grade, I was like, hey, I want to be I want to be a center fielder or the shortstop for the Yankees or I want to play for the Buffalo Bills. And obviously, um, yeah, I'm not that type of athlete. Uh, I love to play, but, uh, you know, there's a different level athlete. and I am not that athlete. Um, but those are the dreams. You know, there are other dreams I had through the, through the years as you grew up. And and one, this is kind of you're going to be like Dr. B is crazy. What would it be like to be president of the United States? Um, There's something there that said, hey, I could help people. I could help people in ways to to enrich their lives. And so president of the United States growing up is like, hey, that would be one way of helping people. And I didn't really realize what I was asking for. But but what I was thinking and, and what connected to me there was how do you help people enrich their daily lives? How do we help people that need help in various ways? Well, I'll be honest with you, um, Principal at Farragut High School, in my view, uh, is much more important in enriching the daily lives of my students than the President of the United States. I love my students and, and the, uh, the idea that that we can have an impact every day for our students. And one of those students, one of those students might be president of the United States, but one of those students might also be a teacher or a lawyer or a garbage man or whatever that is that you are called to be. We want you to be the very best of it. So we're here to enrich lives. And so one of you may be president of the United States one day. I sure hope so. But with, when you have dreams, you have these other things that come up that uh, I want to spend a little bit of time on, these obstacles. Uh, there's a saying out there that says, obstacles are what you see when you take your eyes off your dreams. That's kind of one of those catchy sayings you see in a, uh, a picture that, uh, that somebody might hang up. And yeah, I'm, I love motivational quotes, so you know that I'm not against hanging that picture up. Because it's wholly true is we see our obstacles. 
when we stop focusing on dreams and we see obstacles as things that can't be overcome. But you know what? Obstacles are meant to be overcome. They're meant to be uh, breached. They're meant to be, um, they're meant to challenge you. They're meant to shape you. They're meant to renew you. So let me give you an example. And, and so this is an obstacle that, yeah, you look at, and this is this would for me be one of those things of we're going to find a way around it because I can't climb that. I, that's not me. I didn't have. I'm not the athlete to play professional sports, and I'm not the athlete that can stick my fingers in a crevice of a rock. Um, besides, there's probably snakes in that crevice too, so I'm not going to do that. But you know, people climb this. And this is an obstacle people overcome. Let me give you another example from my life. Uh, and this is a physical obstacle. And, and obstacles take all all shapes. And, and they could be physical. They could be mental. They could be spiritual. They could be emotional. There are things in our lives that come up that keep us or that help us shape ourselves and harden ourselves as we uh, seek to achieve our dreams. If we don't take our eyes off the dreams, we can overcome these obstacles. So in the military, they start you off with these. And every military uh, unit, every uh, doesn't matter what branch you are, you're going to run this small obstacle course. And when you first look at it, when you get into the military, you're like, this is achievement. Many people will look at this as the the achievement for their obstacle course running, that this is, this is something they do. Well, in Marine Corps boot camp, you do this multiple times uh, during a PT session, you might do this three or four times, um, and you would do it uh, about once a week. You do these obstacles, and they get to the point where you got so used to doing these obstacles, they're not obstacles anymore. They are just things you do, things that shape you and make you tougher and make you stronger, but they're not obstacles. These are easy at some point in time. And that's all that's all in conditioning and all getting you ready for these obstacles. See, when I was in boot camp and, and even today, I'm not particularly fond of heights. I don't like the heights. But you know what? You overcome these obstacles because you overcame the ob- other obstacles and you built up confidence. In fact, in, in, in Marine Corps boot camp, they call this the confidence course. And these are part of the confidence course that you are going to climb these obstacles and you're going to manipulate these obstacles to your goal is to finish the confidence course. And as you climb them, you realize, hey, I can do something that I didn't think I could do. I can do something that overcame some fears. These shaped you. They convinced you that you could do things that you seem to be superhuman to other people. In your life, you're going to have these kind of obstacles. They're going to be challenges, and they may be academic. It may be that calculus course in college or that chemistry course in college, or it may be emotional. It may be something that you go through as a mental battle. It may be whatever it is. Those are obstacles that actually are there to shape you. And if you let them shape you in the right way, you will find the inner strength to achieve your dreams if you don't take your eyes off your dreams. I love this quote. If you find a path with no obstacles, it probably doesn't lead to anywhere. See, your dreams are your goal. Those dreams will change through your life. Obviously, I'm not going to be uh, the center fielder for the New York Yankees or, or running back for the Buffalo Bills. But what I am going to do is try to be the very best principal I can be. I am going to try to take care of students as much as possible. I am going to take care of my teachers as much as possible. I am going to be here to help shape your life as much as possible. See, my dream has changed. There are still going to be obstacles. But we're going to overcome those. Your dreams are going to change, too, as you grow up and as you uh, get more education and as you progress. But as you do that, use those talents that you're developing. Don't be afraid of the obstacles in your path. Overcome them. 
Lastly, dream big. Don't let your dreams fall away because of obstacles. Work hard. There's no replacement for working hard. And ultimately, stay humble. Guys, I'm so very proud of you. Congratulations on your 2020 induction to the National Honor Society.